Hey folks, this is Kalani. Going into the next expansion is going to be fairly interesting when it comes to professions. A lot of focus was put into the profession system early on in Legion. There were a bunch of quests to complete for each profession which told a unique story to tailoring, leatherworking, blacksmithing, you name it. We had to learn from various individuals until we mastered crafting with the new materials at our disposal. More effort and time was dedicated later on in the expansion as well, which is a first for the profession system when Argus was released. That fell a little flat on its face compared to the start of Legion, but it's nice to see the dev team at least putting the profession system on the board instead of pushing something on us that's only half-baked. Hopefully they'll receive that same treatment going into Battle for Azeroth, and so far it looks like we might be in good hands once again. Professions are decently fleshed out on the beta, and there's some interesting and fun variety with gathering and crafting. Engineers also aren't being completely kicked to the curb this time around, so that's really exciting. We had an early look at the professions and what each gathering and crafting profession is probably going to look like by the time BFA rolls around, but more and more has been added to the system since then, including more information on how we're going to progress with our professions, so that's what I want to look at in this video. If you haven't watched the previous professions video, I'll link that in the description below. If you're left wondering a few things by the time this video's done, that one might have some answers for you. So the first thing I want to touch on is the progression system itself, because quite a lot is changing going into Battle for Azeroth. Instead of 1 to 800 in your given profession, things are now broken down by expansion. So we have 1 to 300 for vanilla, 1 to 500 for Battle for Azeroth, and the rest of the expansions are divvied up as well. Most of them are 1 of 75 skill progressions, but some are actually 0 of 0, and Legion is then 1 of 100. So you're going to have a lot more to pay attention to if you want to play around with some of the older expansions, professions, and recipes, but if you just just want the Battle for Azeroth stuff, don't worry too much. You have a new section dedicated to your BFA professions, and they all go up to 150. Everyone starts with 1 of 150, and you can pick up BFA professions without having any prior levels or experience, so if you want to swap when BFA launches, you can do so freely. If you want to swap halfway through, that's not a problem either. I absolutely love this change. Numbers were getting a little bit out of hand. Maybe the dev team realized that an item level squish isn't the only kind of squish we could do with after having so many expansions adding more and more numbers onto the profession's max limit. This solves a few problems all at once. There's no prior requirement to picking up new professions. There's no huge level grind to get yourself up to 800 so you can start looking at maxing for the new expansion, and you don't have what looks like a massive grind ahead of you whenever you pick up a new profession. Starting out of 1 of 800 didn't feel all that great, but 1 of 150 is much better and it's all relevant to the current expansion. There's also no drawbacks from being underleveled, no ghost iron scraps or less efficient gathering until you get up to speed. It's a fantastic change and sets us up nicely for the future because when a new expansion rolls around, all they have to do is add another section with a new progression bar instead of adding on another 150 numbers to our already crazy max limit. When it comes to actually leveling up your professions from 1 to 150, it's going to change depending on what professions you're looking at. Gathering is fairly straightforward, pick herbs, mine some deposits or skin some animals until you reach the the cap of 150. You can gather any node in your profession without limit or restriction from level 1, though you're going to want to unlock some of the higher ranks of your gathering as quickly as possible to increase your efficiency. Rank 1 for all common gathers can be learned at level 1 of your profession, and rank 1 for some rarer materials can be learned at level 25. For herbing, the rare material is anchorweed, and for mining, the rare material is platinum. Skinning works a little differently, they just have a chance to gather rare materials when skinning at higher ranks. Getting to 150 should be fairly quick and easy for gathering professions, but what about crafting professions? There were a lot of quests in Legion which gated your recipes and ranks, which made your progression very slow. Well, it seems like you won't have to worry about that at all. Every crafting profession has new recipes or new ranks of recipes to learn about every 10 to 15 levels from your trainer, meaning you always have something orange or at least yellow to create, giving you an easy pathway to at least 100 before things get a little slower. It looks like as long as you have the raw materials required for your crafting, you can just craft and craft and craft without having to worry about quests stopping you halfway through. In fact, I haven't actually run into any profession quests for any crafting profession yet, which is a little disappointing. Maybe they'll be made available at 150 and provide some expert advice instead of guiding you through the basics. You might have to rely on getting some rank 3 recipes to reach the max of 150, which should be fairly easy anyway. A lot of them are tied to very specific things which you can work towards. Speaking of ranks, that's our next level of progression after the raw numbers game of 1 to 150, so let's see how they're changing next expansion. 
Obviously, this is going to be different for gathering and crafting ranks, but for gathering ranks, they're tied to quests for the most part. You get your first ranks from the trainer, then you unlock certain quests as you level up your professions. It looks like at 25, 50, and 75 skill points of your profession, you're able to pick up a quest from your trainer. This works with Herbie and Mining, at least. Skinning might end up being a little different again due to the way their ranks work, and everything comes from skinning monsters instead of actual nodes out in the world. These quests don't block each other either. You don't have to do the 25 skill point quests to pick up the 50 point quests. If you really wanted to, you could go all the way up to 75 and pick up all of the quests at once. I didn't see any extra quests pop up for herbalism at 100, 125, or 150, and there aren't enough ranks to distribute between more quests anyway, so I guess there's no more quests after 75. That could change by the time BFA goes live, but that's how things are on the beta right now. The quests have you do a variety of things, not all of them tied to your profession. All rank 2s for herbalism are tied to quests, and so are most rank 3s. The exception are Akunda's Bite and Winter's Kiss, which are special in that they can only be found in one zone each. Akunda's Bite is only in Voldoon, and Winter's Kiss is only in Drustvar. Those two herbs seem to have a rank 3 tied to random gathering, just like all rank 3s worked in Legion. Anchorweed rank 2 is tied to a dungeon quest, so if you're hoping dungeon quests were a thing of the past, I'm afraid I'm going to have to disappoint you. I'm not sure where rank 3 Anchor's Weed comes from, but I would hedge my bets that from the first raid. Mining should work out the same with Monolite and Storm Silver ranks coming from quests, and Platinum ranks from dungeon or raid quests. Right now, all ranks increase yield, none of them do anything special. I'm still hoping for that to change by the time BFA goes live, but at this point I wouldn't be surprised if it ships as is. Ranking up in crafting professions seems much more straightforward, and it's actually how you level up. When you learn a rank 2 of a recipe, that craft becomes orange again, and you can even get further by crafting the same thing over and over again. Funnily enough, the ranks all reduce materials required to craft, so you can start off relatively slow with heavy material requirements, and you get faster and faster as you start needing less materials per level up. Quite a few recipes do start off with very high material requirements though, so you're going to have to farm up quite a few herbs before you're able to max alchemy, and a whole bunch of ore before you can max out blacksmithing. The good news, if you want to call it good news, is that there's no randomness to your ranks, and there's no quests to get in your way. If you enjoyed the quests and the story they told in Legion, I'm sorry, I guess, but for now there's no quests at all tied to crafting professions while leveling them up. Personally, I'm a little disappointed. I did enjoy the quests the first time around, but saying that, I really hated the time gating for any subsequent ventures into professions, so my feelings are a bit of a mixed bag right now. Most, if not all, rank 3 recipes for crafting professions seem to come from reputation vendors. If you look through each rep vendor, you can see a huge list of rank 3 recipes on pretty much every vendor for every crafting profession. It looks like those contracts from Inscription are going to be useful after all. Even flasks from Alchemy are tied to rat vendors, so no RNG for rank 3 flasks anymore. It's going to be a race to revered reputations instead. The rank 3 recipes that aren't from rat vendors seem to come from work order world quests, so be sure to keep an eye on your map if you're hunting for something specific. Almost every rank 2 of every recipe in every profession reduces the materials required to create that recipe. Sadly, the same can be said of rank 3 recipes. Most of them just further reduce the materials required to craft items or recipes, but a few are a bit more interesting. Rank 3 on alchemy potions and flasks give you a chance to create multiple potions for free, and engineering works the same way with their bombs. Rank 3 gives you a chance to create multiple bombs for free, and I think those are actually the only ones I managed to find which weren't simply reducing the materials. But at least we still get the procs tied to alchemy, they were always fun. So, while gathering professions keeps some quests tied to progression, it seems like Blizzard wanted to simplify the entire crafting process by having everything learned from your actual trainer, which we haven't seen in a little while, and then tying your rank 3 recipes to reputation time gates instead of random procs. Not a bad choice, though it does feel a little watered down compared to the questing experience we had in Legion, which also had its faults because no one wanted to go through it a second or a third time, so maybe it was just a lot of wasted effort and development time. I guess we'll see how everyone feels when they can get their hands on the finished product. There's still a little time for a few things to change, and they might have a few things hidden for you when you get to max level in your professions. Hopefully each profession has something worthwhile at 150 to make it worth leveling up. Epic gems for jewel crafting, the best enchants for enchanters, cauldrons for alchemists, epic gear for tailoring, leatherworking and blacksmithing. Something useful, something profitable. It's always nice when your hard work pays off in the end. One thing I didn't touch on yet is rare crafting materials. The first is Expulsum, which is kind of like the New Bloods of Sargeras and comes from some of the same sources. You can obtain some randomly while gathering, from random mobs, some world quests, 
you get the idea. Most of the later recipes, especially the ones for gear, require a handful of expulsum to craft, so picking up a gathering profession might not be the worst idea, even if you have a few quests to get through to obtain your rank ups. It might just help fuel your crafting early on. There is another version of the Obliterum Forge too, but instead of a new Obliterum it allows you to break down your crafted items into the materials you use to craft them. The average return rate is apparently about 50% of the material cost of the item, so if something costs 10 monolite ore to craft and you break it down over and over again, your average return monolite ore should be about 5 per item. Not a bad deal. Breaking down crafted items in this manner also gives you a chance to obtain some expulsum, which is probably the main alert of this device. Then again, if you're looking for a very specific stat combination and the game just won't give it to you, using the scrapper is way faster than trying to sell your failed crafts to buy more raw materials to try again, with the added bonus of some expulsum now and again. Maybe you won't need a gathering profession for expulsum after all, but you're going to be paying a hefty premium for all of those raw materials right at the start of the expansion. Expulsum isn't the only rare crafting material though, there's one called Hydrocore, which apparently comes from Zuldazar and Kulturas dungeons, so maybe we won't be finding any Expulsum in the depths of this expansion dungeons, and there's also Sanguicel, which comes from Uldia quite specifically. This smells like the return of dungeon and raid specific crafting materials, but check out what you can create. There's belt and leg craftable epics for plate wearers, boot and leg crafted items for leather and mail wearers, and then crafted legs and gloves for cloth wearers. All of these these crafted epics are bind on pickups, so you won't be able to trade them around after crafting them. All of the rare crafting materials, that's Expulsum, Hydrocore, and Sanguicel, are also all bind on pickup, so this is going to be a personal endeavour for yourself. The fun part is this gear is on par with raid gear. You can craft item level 355, item level 370, and item level 385 pieces of this gear. That's the equivalent of normal, heroic, and mythic raid loot. I'm having all kinds of flashbacks right now. Rare crafting materials that come from dungeons and raids to allow you to craft high-end PvE gear? What expansion are we in? again. Now, there is a slight problem with the mythic gear pieces. They require 10 times the sanguicel of the heroic equivalent pieces, and I don't imagine this stuff is going to be easy to collect, so good luck, have fun with that one. I'll be over in the corner picking my herbs and writing a few scrolls. So quite a bit of change from the system we had in Legion, but I'm really excited to get my hands on the Battle for Azeroth professions for real when the expansion goes live. There's something just so fun about the whole new round of raw materials and crafting recipes that you really only get at the start of an expansion. Everyone learning what's what where stuff comes from and how much it's worth. It's always a blast. But that's it for our little preview of the progression of the profession system in Battle for Azeroth. What do you think so far? Would you want more or less quests tied to professions? Leave all your thoughts in the comments section below. A big thank you to all of our supporters over on Patreon. We're getting close to our first milestone, so if you want to check that out, you can find a link in the description below. Remember to leave a like just below the video before you leave, and if you want to see more, make sure to subscribe. But apart from that, thanks for watching, folks. Good luck and have fun, and as always, I will see you next time.